It's no secret that the human mind is susceptible to information that it consumes on a daily basis. But what most people fail to realize is that when it comes to money matters, the system is rigged against you. You are being programmed to remain poor. In this video, we're gonna dive into the top three problems that contribute to this type of mental programming. By understanding these issues, you'll be able to be better equipped to make the necessary changes. Also, if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, as you know from my previous video, I've got a bone to pick with gurus and teachers who promote the idea that all you need is to focus on your mindset and you magically become rich and successful. It's not that simple. Sure, having big dreams and doing the whole visualization manifestation are important. And I do believe that working on your mindset is important. But if you don't have a plan and take action or have the necessary knowledge your mindset is essentially worthless. Now, I'm starting off this video because I wanted to emphasize the importance of mindset, but also recognize that there may be some underlying factors working against you. You may have been programmed to think and act a certain way that holds you back from your success. That being said, I truly believe that in order to achieve real success, you need to work on your mindset to ensure that you subconsciously foster success. It's not just about positive thinking, it's about taking action, having a plan, and of course, putting in the effort. So something's been on my mind lately and it's how most of us have been programmed from birth to stay poor. It's the harsh truth and it's an important one to recognize if you want to make a change. In this video, I'll be diving into the top three ways that you're essentially being programmed in today's society. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. I'll also share some tactics that I've worked out. Let's get into it. First up, the modern education system plays a big role in how we are programmed to be workers and stay in a certain economic class. Unfortunately, this often translates to being programmed to be poor, essentially. In this video, you'll be focusing on how it relates to your finances specifically. The way we go to school today is based off of changes that happened 200 years ago, during the Industrial Revolution, the wealth needed people to man the machines in factories that were popping up all over the globe. They didn't just need the people, they needed people who would follow orders, be agreeable, execute tasks and in a regimented and controlled way. And that's where the idea of a factory school came in. Formal education at the time was reserved for the super rich, but then someone in Prussia had the fantastic idea of setting up a government-provided education for all children in a regimented and controlled way. The intention was to produce as many drones as possible in order to man the machines during the Industrial Revolution. Nowadays, the schooling system in most countries was built off of very similar foundations. And whilst it's certainly evolved, and expanded in certain ways, it's worth recognizing how these early ideas still impact our education system today. Let me introduce you to a quote from a Northwestern University economist who shed light on the origins of factory schools. Much of this education, however, was not technical in nature, but social and moral. Workers who had spent their days working in domestic settings had been taught to follow orders, to respect the space and property, rights of others, be punctual and docile and sober. The early industrial capitalists spent a great deal of effort and time in socializing conditions of their labor force, especially in Sunday schools where they were designed to inoculate the middle class values and attitudes as to make the workers more susceptible to incentives that the factories essentially needed. Yes, the education was provided for free by the government, but its intent purpose was to create drones that said, yes, sir, no, sir, arrive on time, fulfill orders, and essentially operate the machines. The goal wasn't to educate, but to produce individuals to operate these metal machines. This process of state-sponsored schooling to turn people into factory workers was quickly implemented by the wealthy industrialists across North America and Europe. The education system is a well-oiled machine designed to turn out drones rather than free thinkers or financially savvy individuals. It was built to produce a generation of worker bees trained to fill the monotonous jobs of society without question. And unfortunately, it's the same system that exists today, centuries after its inception. Traditional schools offer a one-size-fits-all education with little to no emphasis on critical thinking or entrepreneurship. The focus is on following orders and fitting into the predetermined mold and becoming a compliant member of society. The education has failed to adapt in the changing world, leaving students ill-equipped to manage their finances, 
grow their wealth, or even understand basic financial concepts like mortgages and taxes. The Industrial Revolution may have passed, but the education system still churns out employees and paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck workers. The formula is simple. Get an education, land a job, work until retirement, and then die. It's no wonder so many people find it difficult to break free from the shackles of the programmed existence. And until the education system evolves to meet the needs of the changing world, the cycle will continue. Let me start by shedding a glimmer of hope and saying that I firmly believe that teachers aren't the bad guys here. In fact, most of them have noble intentions and genuinely want to make a difference. But the truth is, is that they were trained in a system that is now archaic and simply doesn't cut it anymore. Fortunately, there is a small percentage of us who manage to break free from this outdated system and still think relatively critically. And if you're watching this video, that includes you and me, hopefully. It's up to us to lead by example, to show that the old ways of doing things no longer suffice. Now let's move on to the second way that you've been programmed into being poor, which is our beliefs. This one is a bit trickier as it is deeply ingrained from a young age. For some, it's due to growing up around people who are constantly argued about money. For others, it's hearing relatives speak ill of those who have money. And for some, it's simply growing up in an impoverished community. Regardless of the cause, the end result is the same. The negative mindset when it comes to money and financial success. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have the power to change our beliefs and overcome this programming. It won't be easy, but it's certainly possible. Renowned biologist Dr. Bruce Lipton delves deep into the impact of childhood environment on one's financial beliefs and how it shapes the future. If you were raised to believe that money is the root of all evil or that it's hard to come by or that it causes problems, those ideas become ingrained in your subconscious mind and it can be incredibly challenging to change those ideas as an adult. Dr. Lipton further emphasizes Aristotle's famous quote, Give me a child until he is seven, and I will show you the man. The meaning behind this is simple yet profound. The experiences and programming a child receives during the formative years of their life, which is up to seven years of age, will most likely dictate their actions and shape their entire existence. When it comes to how we view finances, money and success, our childhood experiences can have a significant impact on our beliefs. Unfortunately, many of people have a negative perception of these topics and they may not even realize that where those beliefs came from, it's often a result of the environment we grew up in. I mean, think about it. If you were raised in a poor community where everyone around you struggled financially, that might be the only reality you know. It becomes challenging to imagine a different way of living. As a result, these people and communities tend to stay in the same situation, not because of the lack of opportunities, but because they can't mentally picture a different reality. The beliefs we develop in childhood can shape our financial lives in significant ways, often subconsciously. However, it's essential to understand that it's not our fault. Our upbringing doesn't have to dictate our future. We do have the power to change our beliefs and create a better financial future for ourselves. Going to an example, it's a tale as old as time, perpetuated by the media that we consume on a daily basis, from books to TV shows, to movies, the trope of a filthy rich villain has been embedded in our culture for decades. I mean, think about it. How many times have you seen an evil king or queen flaunting their wealth or a billionaire supervillain using their money to manipulate and control those around them? Even in the cartoons, the bad guys are often portrayed as wealthy, such as Cruella de Vil or Scrooge McDuck. But why is this narrative so prevalent? Is it simply a reflection of reality or is there something more insidious at play? The truth is, these tropes exist to keep us believing that wealthy is inherently corrupt and the rich are to be mistrusted. Sure, there are exceptions to this rule like Tony Stark's Iron Man, but for the most part, the media perpetuates the idea that the rich got to where they are only through dishonest means. It's a dangerous mindset that only serves to keep us stuck in a cycle of poverty and mistrust. So the next time you see a rich person portrayed as a bad guy, ask yourself, is this really the truth or just another example of a tired old trope? While you don't have to give up on your favorite TV shows and movies entirely, being aware of the negative connotations around finances that may be portrayed can help you maybe override your subconscious beliefs that may not serve you well. Now, this next part may be difficult to hear, but the truth is that most people are poor by design. 
the current system which revolves around the unchecked capitalism is rigged against the majority of the population. However, it doesn't mean that capitalism is all bad. It can create opportunities and allow individuals to create something for themselves. But it is important to recognize the potential downsides and strive for a more balanced approach. Picture this. You're scrolling through your social media feed, minding your own business, when suddenly you see an ad for a product you didn't even know you needed, and then another, and another. It's like they know exactly how to push the buttons and drain your wallet, using psychological tricks and emotional triggers to override your rational thinking. This is the darker side of capitalism, where giant companies can advertise to you with little regulation and use their massive budgets to keep you hooked. They prey on the vulnerable, often worsening terms, lower interest rates and higher fees to those who are already at the bottom of the economic ladder. And it's designed to keep you stuck in your current position, programmed to stay exactly where you are. Take Amazon, for example. They spend millions of dollars every year on advertising and marketing, using mind experts and advertising agencies to figure out exactly what makes you tick. They have people specifically working on an algorithm to make you want to keep buying more. And it's a vicious cycle, you know, but we can break it by being aware of these tactics and striving for a more balanced approach to capitalism. Don't let them drain your wallet. Take control of your financial well-being. I know it's a stupid analogy, but imagine you're a knight trying to defend a castle. Instead of a sword or a shield, you're armed with a hot dog. That's what it's like trying to resist the constant barrage of advertising from a billion dollar companies who are experts in hijacking your mind. Every year, these companies get better at it, using psychological tricks and your hardwired impulses to get you to spend more and more. Draining your wallet and keeping you in a perpetual cycle of living off paycheck to paycheck. It's not just about spending money. We've been programmed since childhood to believe that you don't really have to save your money because living in the moment is the only way to truly be happy. It's like we're all stuck in a trap with no way out. So what can you do? It's not easy, but the first step is to be aware of what's going on. These companies have a vested interest into keeping this cycle going. And unless the system changes, it's not gonna get any better. But you don't have to be a psychologist or a self-help guru to take control of your own life. It's about making conscious decisions and realizing that you don't need the latest and greatest things to keep you happy. And taking a step back to break free from the cycle. Each of us comes with our own set of limitations stemming from our diverse backgrounds, challenges, and unique experiences. My parents would expose me to different cultures and ways of living. As I grew up in Singapore, it was a bit of a melting pot for different viewpoints on how life should be lived. It rewired my brain to constantly think about success, problem solving, and creating wealth for myself. The mindset my parents instilled on me was one of abundance, beauty, and endless opportunities. Now, I understand that not everyone can go back in time and ask their parents to constantly stimulate them in a way to make them better decision makers in the future. But with that said, it's never too late to start rewiring your brain for wealth and success. Changing your mindset is not enough to achieve success. You also need the skill sets and a willingness to actually take action. Whilst mindset is crucial and it can make or break your efforts, it's not enough to bring about the change on its own. To succeed, you really need to back up your mindset with the skills and determination to see your plans through even through difficult situations. It's important to be mindful of the information you're consuming and the people that you're surrounding yourself with. If you're constantly hearing negative messages about money, maybe it's time to distance yourself from those conversations and focus more on positive influences. This could mean listening to inspirational teachers, diving into life-changing audiobooks, or, or just tuning into some podcasts that may interest you with different skill sets. Time is precious. So don't waste it on things that don't serve you. Take the challenge to see what happens. Your future self will thank you.